What's going on you guys? My name is Josh, also known as Harry Tornado, and my full-time job is selling things on eBay and making YouTube videos about that. If you watched my very last video that I posted a couple days ago, I showed you guys a new chart that I made that I'm going to implement into my daily life to keep me accountable, keep me productive, and make sure I'm not neglecting one aspect of my life over another. So this morning, I actually woke up and immediately went to the chart. If you guys don't understand what you're looking at here, go back and watch that last video. But as you can see, I separated my business column into two different categories. YouTube is actually performing pretty well for me lately, so I gave that a two. But you see, eBay eBay is all the way down here at a 10 because I suck at eBay over the last couple weeks. So today, that's going to be my focus. Stick around. So today is Tuesday and I actually had like nine or 10 things go out yesterday and one of those was a really interesting sale. I definitely wanna to talk to you guys about that later on in today's video. But today, Tuesday, I only have four things, four or five things going out. So let's go ahead and knock those out. So the first item is down here in the U bin and it's a puzzle, pretty cool puzzle. It's like a three dimensional puzzle of Venice. I actually got this at the Goodwill bins maybe like two months ago, probably paid about a dollar for it and it sold to a viewer named Matt. He goes by Bearded Pokeytuber on YouTube. So Matt, thanks so much for his support. He paid a total of $12 free shipping for this. So not a ton of money. Puzzles were super hot back in like April or May of last year when people were still in lockdown. And uh, I thought I could probably get like 10 bucks, 10, 15 bucks plus shipping for this. But uh, I think I think I sent out offers of like 12 free shipping and Matt accepted. So I might make a couple bucks on this, I don't know. Next item is in the O bin over here, and this is a softball glove. Uh, I was going to say women's softball glove, but I didn't want to assume it was women's just because it was pink and brown, but it is a fast pitch softball glove, which I believe is a women's only sport. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think I got this at the Goodwill bins, probably paid about a dollar or so for it, and this sold for $15 plus $8 in shipping. This will fit in a padded flat rate envelope and it will cost me exactly eight dollars to ship anywhere in the united states so profiting like i don't know what like 11 12 bucks on this the next item going out is this pair of echo women's loafer shoes i actually got these at the goodwill bins believe it or not still new in the box i think i paid like three dollars for these 350 or so they look like that and as you can see, they sold for $40 free shipping. Now, what's interesting about this pair of shoes is that they actually sold through to an international buyer, but not through the eBay Global Shipping Program. These sold just with regular eBay standard international delivery. And these shoes are actually going to South Korea. So although I listed them $40 free shipping, if they sell to an international buyer, the buyer will have to pay international shipping. So this buyer was all in like, $65, I think $65, $66. So I'm going to, you know, he paid $40 for the shoes and then it'll probably cost me about probably like 20 bucks or so. We'll, we'll see once we get in the office, but it'll probably cost me about 20 to $25, hopefully to send these to South Korea. Check out these bad mama jamas. Goodwill bins, baby. Like literally brand new, like never worn. Some, somebody bought them for their grandma or something. And then grandma said, I don't want them. Donate them to Goodwill. And then along comes Harry Tornado, buys them for three bucks, sells them to somebody in South Korea for $40 plus shipping. That's what I love about reselling, just finding random stuff like this and being able to connect it with somebody who really wants it literally on the other side of the earth. That's, that's crazy to me. Next thing going out is another pair of shoes and it's some uh, World Industries skate shoes. I got these at Goodwill for $6.50 and I knew that World, I think you can't even see it, the World Industries is a brand of skateboards and skate clothing and, and stuff. Can you see that world? Oh, it's on the tongue, better than that. World Industries, okay? They make skateboards, skate clothing, skate accessories, things like that. But I couldn't find exact sold comps on this. So I actually listed the this pair of shoes. I mean, they're, they're basically like new condition, worn a couple times. I actually listed them for $125 free shipping just to see what would happen. I sent out a couple offers of like 75 and 80 and 60 and eventually sent out an offer of $50. I think it had four or five watchers on there and these actually sold to a viewer. Uh, I don't think he said his name and he actually hasn't paid for these yet. So we're not gonna ship these out yet, but his eBay name was like Jimbo something. So Jimbo, thanks for the support, man. I really appreciate that and I hope you enjoy the shoes. So that's everything that I sold on eBay yesterday, but before I head inside to get these items packed up and shipped out, I do wanna share with you this sale from yesterday that I was super 
pumped about. So I found this pair of Brooks GTS 16 women's running shoes at Salvation Army for $5.99. Long time ago, like probably 10 or 11 months ago, but they were in excellent condition, like barely worn. I don't even think they were, they may, may have been tried on once. I mean, zero wear to the bottoms, no heel wear, like new condition. But the problem was, you see there that the size was 2A. 2A means that they are extra, extra narrow. And generally, these are very difficult size shoes to sell. I usually stay away from them. Even with a pair of, you know, more modern Brooks, the, the six GTS 16s, even in great condition, if I would have seen that they were a 2A in, in width, I probably would have left them because there's just so only so many people out there with that narrow of a foot that are they're looking for that size of running shoe. But I bought it. I figured I'd go ahead and get it listed anyway. I had them listed for $69.99 plus shipping. I never sent out any offers. I never promoted them in any way. I was just waiting for that one customer to come along with that exact size foot that needed this exact model of Brooks running shoe. And this past weekend, that's exactly what happened. Somebody came along. I think I did have offers available on this, but they didn't even send an offer. They just outright bought it and paid $69.99. And 99 cents plus shipping. This was the most expensive pair of Brooks running shoes I've ever sold. Generally, with normal men's and women's sizes, you know, women's 7B or men's 10 regular width or whatever, those are gonna sell for 30 to 50 bucks plus shipping, maybe if they're in really good condition. But this pair, being in such a weird size, I knew it would take a long time to sell, almost a year. I think it's been listed for about 10 months, but it eventually did sell for a very high asking price. Cause you gotta think if that person that has that size foot, like a two extra narrow, needing that size and that exact model of Brooks running shoe, if they went to a store, the store would probably have to order that size and then they would have to pay you know, full retail, like what, 150 bucks, 130 bucks or so. So the fact that they can find their exact size on eBay and their exact model for like 70 bucks plus shipping, that is a hot deal for that nice lady who bought my shoe. So whoever you are out there, hope you enjoy the shoe and thank you for helping me get my most highest value Brooks running shoe sale ever. All right, let's get this stuff backed up. Like I said, the softball glove is just gonna go in a padded flat rate envelope. Some people put these in boxes because they don't want them to get messed up, but I, every, every glove, every baseball or softball glove I've ever sold has been shipped this way and I have had zero complaints. Yeah, I mean, it's a leather glove. It's not like a vase or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and it, and it will say if, if I sold like a really nice glove, like a Nakona glove or something for like 150 bucks or 200 bucks or so, then yeah, I might put that in a box and send it priority. But this is a $15 glove, $8 shipping. This is gonna be totally fine. Thank you card in there. Also, I will say, if you're putting thank you cards in there, this literally just says thank you written in Sharpie, but just in case, if, you have, if you're writing a Sharpie, I would put the Sharpie not touching the glove, because you don't want like the Sharpie like transfer onto the glove if it gets hot or whatever, so I always just put Sharpie side up or Sharpie side away from the item. That way there's no risk of transfer onto the fabric or material of the actual item. So these Echo shoes are already in a box, but I'm not gonna just ship them like that, especially since they're going all the way to South Korea. And since they're not going through the eBay global shipping program, they're not gonna go through like the warehouse process where eBay would actually check it and make sure it was okay and then repack it and send it on. This is going straight to South Korea. So you definitely wanna box this very, very well. So I'm gonna put this in a priority mail shoe box with probably some packing paper around it. And that should be good to go to make it all the way to South Korea. I'm gonna take some packing paper and just wrap up the box it's like a little burrito or something. If it's wrinkly, that actually makes the paper a little bit more dense and allows for even more protection. So you kind of want it to be wrinkly at some points. Slide it in. And that's gonna be pretty secure. Again, they're shoes, they're not fragile. Just the, uh, the actual box that came in along with the extra packing paper and the protection of this outside box should be totally enough to make it to South Korea. And then we have the puzzle. I will say the worst thing about puzzles is that generally they're too heavy to ship first class. Like this is just over one pound. So this is gonna have to go priority. And that, so it's gonna cost, you know, $8 to $15 to ship depending on where it's going in the country. So if you're selling puzzles for $12 free shipping like this, there's not a lot of meat left on the bone when you have to ship. So I'm probably gonna stay away from puzzles from now on. Again, they were super, super hot last year this time, but now, I mean, it's just puzzles. <laughs> yeah, not, not many people care about them anymore. Uh, so we're gonna try to ship this out for the cheapest way possible, just so I don't lose money on this $12 sale. 
This puzzle is probably going to fit in, uh, this looks like it would probably fit in this. This is a Priority Mail uh, 1097 box. Wrap it up just like we did the shoe box. Doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to pat it a little bit. Oh yeah, this is like a perfect fit in this. And these boxes have actually have these little adhesive things. You just peel off this white thing and then it'll stick. It should be good to go, but I always put a little piece of tape over it because I'm paranoid. Usually the adhesive is totally fine. So there we go. There's a puzzle. Hopefully it's not going too far away. So here's a very interesting situation. The buyer for the fast pitch softball glove actually only lives in Georgia, which is just one state away from me in South Carolina. So the regular priority shipping, just a two pound box with the glove in it, is only $7.96. Whereas shipping the glove in the pad flat rate envelope like we just packed up is actually $8 even. So it would be four cents cheaper to take the glove out of the padded flat rate envelope and put it in a, in a box and just ship that regular priority. Personally, I don't think it's worth my time to save four cents on that, but it is interesting to see that if items are very close to you and in you know, your state, one or two states away, uh, the flat rate packaging envelopes and regular envelopes, padded envelopes, large, medium, small flat rate boxes may not always be the cheapest option. So here's something else that's really interesting. I just printed out the label for the Echo shoes that are going all the way to South Korea. And on the eBay screen, it has shipped to and it has the person's address. I don't know if it's a man or woman, but it's a whole lot of South Korean stuff that I don't understand. That's what I thought was going to be on the label. But then when I printed out the label, it had like eBay, eBay international delivery, kind of like, you know, your global shipping stuff ships to Kentucky usually, and then it goes from Kentucky to somewhere else. So I thought with eBay International Delivery, it went straight to the customer, but I guess not. This is really interesting. Uh, so I correct myself. What I said earlier was not true, apparently. Uh, but it only cost me $23. So you can see, I'll show you, hopefully, hopefully I'll show you. 23 bucks, eBay International Standard Delivery. So I don't know, I thought the whole point of eBay Standard Delivery was so that eBay didn't have to get involved and therefore you could ship cheaper, but uh, I don't know. Maybe if somebody wants to explain it to me in the comments, I would love to learn about this uh, further. But the fact is, it only cost me 23 bucks to send this two-pound package all the way to South Korea. So that's pretty good. And finally, we have the puzzle, which ships at a two-pound rate in this box. It's going to uh, Massachusetts, and it's going to cost me eight dollars, like eight dollars and eighty-three cents, or some something less than nine dollars. So making, well, we paid like a dollar for the puzzle, eight eighty-three plus eBay fees. Not making a lot of money, but I don't think we're losing money, which uh, hopefully will let me learn my lesson about buying puzzles to sell on eBay. So now that I have everything packed up and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and get into the eBay side of things for today. For me, personally, I work better when I do things in batches. Like if I want to list 20 things today, I need to find 20 things, make sure they are cleaned and prepped and ready to be photographed, then photograph all 20 of them, then list all 20 of them in that order. I... I used to do like the take one thing through the whole process and then start with the next thing, but I've just found that the batching method works best for me. So right now I'm gonna go through my death pile over here and I'm gonna try to find 20 things that are either ready to be listed or get 20 things prepped and cleaned and ready to be photographed. A little while later. So I have my 20 items picked out. A couple of them are ready to be listed. They don't need any cleaning or prepping, but most of them do need some form of prep before we can get them photographed and listed. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that, but I'll give you guys a, a sneak peek of what I'm gonna be actually trying to get listed today. So here are my 20 items I'm working on today. Five golf clubs, I'm not gonna show you those. Those are boring for most of you guys. Uh, everything right here are things that are ready to be listed that don't need any prep. Got a Meredith Funko Pop, a NCAA Football 2014 for Xbox 360, a Nintendo Wii console only, four hats and a pair of shoes. Uh, these two hats in the, oh, actually these all four hats and the shoes are brand new. Uh, and the Meredith Funko Pop is brand new as well. Then I got two pairs of Hoka's, a pair of OnCloud shoes, Xbox controller, some tailor-made golf balls, a pair of kids' Jordans, softball glove from my last video, and then the five golf clubs. So all this stuff right here is ready to be listed. They are, they're cleaned and prepped and ready to go. And everything from here over still needs to be cleaned and prepped. So that's what I'm going to work on. <laughs>
as I put the pictures that I was taking on the screen, I'm sure you realize that I was photographing things that weren't part of my original 20 things that I picked out. And that's because the shoes that I cleaned earlier down there, as you can see, were not completely dry yet. And I wanted to make sure I had 20 things photographed. But now, after I took the first batch, batch of pictures, I went to the post office and went to the grocery store to buy some groceries. I actually went to uh, Salvation Army <laughs> after I left the post office and actually found a nice little pair of shoes here. Picked up this nice pair of uh, Nike Air Max. These are, I think, are women's size seven and a half. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but these are in excellent condition. Very minimal signs of wear, and I don't know if you can see that right there, but I paid $6.99 for these, which is a great price to pay for a pair of Nikes. The insoles are in great condition. There's a little tag right there, size so seven and a half. Let me look up the style number to see the exact model of these. Okay, so these are Nike Women's Air Max Correlate LTR. You can see when we type in the model number there, it brings up the exact name of the shoe. When I searched that style number on eBay, I actually didn't see any sold comps, but that doesn't mean these aren't gonna sell. They'll definitely sell. Uh, these are in really, really good condition. I mean, minimal signs of wear. A good size too. Women's 7.5 is a very good size of shoes. So I'll get these listed for probably 50 to 60 bucks plus shipping, turn on best offer and see what happens. If they end up selling for 40 to $50, I'll be totally satisfied, satisfied with that purchase, turn in seven bucks into you know, 40, 45 bucks plus shipping, not too bad. The shoes I cleaned earlier are still kind of damp down there, so I'm not gonna photograph or list those today, but luckily I did photograph an extra three or four items in the garage, so I have 20, I think I have like actually 22 or 23 things photographed on my camera right now, so now I'm gonna take the SD card out of my camera and load it onto the computer, and then I'm gonna list everything on the computer. I'll show you how to do that. Now, the process of using my good camera to take pictures of items I'm listing and then taking the SD card out of the camera, putting it in the computer, and then using the computer to list my stuff is actually something that's pretty new to me. Over the last two years or so, I've done pretty much 100% of my listing on my cell phone, but lately I have switched to the camera SD card computer model, and I actually really like it. I do have two different computer screens in my office that I can use. I have my laptop screen and then an external monitor here. So what this allows me to do is open up the SD card on my laptop screen so I can see all the pictures that I took of all 22 or 23 things today. And then on my bigger screen, I can open up an eBay page and then go through the pictures. The first thing I photographed today, I think is a baseball glove. So I would just search for that baseball glove and that model on eBay to see if I could see some sold comps. And if I find sold comps, I'll know what the price I, I should list them at is. And then I can sell similar and then drag the pictures from basically one screen to the other screen and just do this going down the list of pictures. I really like it. Again, it's helping with the whole batching process, doing one part of the process at once for multiple items. And I actually really like sitting in here, listing instead of listing each item individually sitting out in the garage. In the winter time, the garage can get really cold. And in the summer, the garage can be really hot and sweaty. So coming into my nice air conditioned office and being able to you know, list 20 to 25 or 30 things, however many things I've photographed that day is uh, a nice smooth process that I would highly recommend looking into. So I just finished listing this baseball glove over here and I wanted to share this with you guys. A couple weeks ago, I said that when I was doing batch photos of shoes and golf clubs, it was easy because I would just take the photos and put the golf clubs on the golf club shelf and put the shoes on the shoe shelf. I didn't have to worry about where they were in terms of like what bin it was in. And I said I wasn't sure how to batch photograph items that would need to be put in bins. And somebody commented, I don't remember who it was, I'm so sorry, but she was like, why don't you just take a picture of the bin of the bin with the item in it as like the last picture in the series? I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So with this baseball glove, th like that's the second from last picture. And then the last picture is a picture of my W file with the soft gl softball glove in it. So I know that the custom label on this softball glove when I list it is going to be W. So that, <laughs> that works well for me. With golf clubs, I don't type anything in custom label. With shoes, I don't type anything in custom label, but with everything else that goes into the file cabinet or one of my bins, I just take a picture of the bin that it's in as the last picture of that item, and then I know what to type in. Obviously, I don't upload this last picture to eBay. There's no point in that, but that is it serves as a way to tell me where the item is, and it serves as kind of a break before I get to the next item. So then I just click Next, and the next item is my Meredith uh, Pop figure. So hopefully hopefully that helps you guys. It helped me. Thank, thanks to whoever you were that said that in the comment. I really appreciate that. I just came across something else that may be super helpful for you guys if you want to get into batch photographing your items. I had those two Festool hats. Both of them were 
basically the same hat. One had a slightly larger logo than the other, but what was important was that I photographed them back to back. Like I took pictures of one and then took pictures of the, of the next one. And that's when I go through, I just listed the first one that was the big logo and I listed it, it says success. And now I can go and create similar, which will pull, save all the information I just put in. Uh, so now like the first title was Festool Large Logo Men's Baseball Hat Cap uh, 920 Blue Strap Back One Size. The next one, the only thing I have to change in that title is Small Logo because they're literally the same exact hat, just a different size logo. So it's changed Small Logo. It saved the condition. It actually said the photos. So I don't want to save the photos. You can just delete all and then add new photos. It'll open it up into your, your screen here. I don't know if you've got, you probably can't see that, but... Um, I'm just going to go upload the hat, the pictures of the second hat there, open, and the photos will load there. It saved the brand, it saved, you know, one size, it saved the color, it saved the style, baseball hat, everything is saved. The only thing I had to change was the title and the photos. It even saved the description, brand new with stickers, please see photos for details and let me know if you have any questions. This saves a ton of time. If you're batching photos on similar items, especially if I have golf clubs, I'll try to do, you know, if I've got a set of ping clubs that are all the same brand and model, like ping G10 blue dot, and I've got a seven iron, eight iron, nine iron, and a pitching wedge, I'll make sure to photograph all four of those, you know, one after the other. So that way, when I do the listing for the first one, I can just create similar and literally just change the club number basically in the pictures and everything else will stay the same. It makes listing items so much faster if you can do similar items one after the other. So that's important. I learned that the hard way. When I was taking pictures of golf clubs, I would take one ping G10 and then a Mizuno and then another ping. I'm like, man, it would make so much it would make it so much easier if I was just doing all the pings right after each other. So that's what I did here. Uh, the price stays the same, the shipping stays the same. Literally, all we do is list items. So the again, the only thing I changed was the title and the photos. And I got that hat listed in uh, however long I've been jabbering on about this. But it, it makes things fast, and fast is good. So it's currently 4.55 p.m. My wife usually gets home from work around 4, and I was hoping to get all these items listed on eBay before she got home, but I couldn't quite finish it in time. So she got home, hung out with her, we went and walked Moe's, and then I came back in here to finish up, and I listed a total of 18 things today. I'm not sure. I thought I photographed like 21 or 22 things, but I listed everything that I had photographed on my camera, and that turned out to be 18 things. I've got a pair of shoes, like five golf clubs, bunch of hats, the Xbox controller, the golf balls. Uh, I mean, everything that you guys saw in today's video has currently been listed on my eBay store. Now, to be able to get 18 items clean, prepped, photographed, and listed in one business day is actually pretty good, and that's not incredibly hard, but the hard part is doing that day in and day out, because that is what it takes to make a full-time living with reselling, if that's something you're interested in. For me personally, I have really good days like today where I can film a whole YouTube video and get 18 things, actually more than 18 things, because we cleaned three other pair of shoes that I didn't list today. So we can prep like 23 or 24 things, photograph apparently 18 things, get those things listed, film a YouTube video. Today I did really well. I could probably bump up my eBay magnet to maybe like a seven, and we'll keep the, the YouTube number at a two simply because I can't move it because it's a sticker. But today was a really good day, and it's not hard to have good days every once in a while. It's hard to maintain this level of productivity for long periods of time. I honestly don't have any crazy words of wisdom for you guys to help you through this process. Sometimes you just have to put your head down and work. Like I said a couple videos ago, eBay is not passive income. It's not some get rich quick scheme. eBay is a real job that requires time and attention to be successful. But like I said, today I think I actually did a really good job of running my eBay business. And sometimes you do have to take it one day at a time. It's totally fine to have weekly goals or monthly goals or even yearly goals. But if you can break those down into small, digestible, achievable daily goals, that will make it much more easy to tackle those bigger goals later on. So I want to challenge you guys to set some daily goals in your reselling business. I'm sure that most people watching this video right now probably have the sourcing aspect of reselling under control, but when it comes time to get those items cleaned, photographed, and listed, that's when you could probably use some help. So I'm challenging you right now, start a daily goal of listing at least three items. I think that's pretty achievable even if you're part-time or full-time, and I really think doing that at least 
five days a week, four to five days a week, I think that'll really help you get to your eBay and reselling goals in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I hope it helped you to some degree. If it did, take a couple seconds and hit that like button down below. It's totally free and really helps me out a ton. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below as well. Thank you guys again for watching. You're the best and I'll catch you on the next one.